Revenge is not a path for the weak of heart. It requires courage, reinvention, and most of all, determination. With 7 HP, he's charging down on the side! Oh, oh it's my God. God. It's not enough! Sassy! What yes. is Sassy made of? The determination to face an enemy that's defeated you again and again, and still believe you can win. And Sassy now in the 1v2. Plant gonna come in, but they are closing the gap fast. A safe plant, but then now this player's on long. Note the one close through garage. He absolutely has! And with 40 HP, he's done the unthinkable! Sassy is one of the best Valorant players in the world, and he got to the top by taking revenge on the one team that held him back from greatness. It's all on one. The last man standing at finesse, and after so much time, so many years of heartbreak, and the hands of Optic, Loud beat them in the best possible way, becoming the Valorant 2022 champion. What a moment. Okay, so before I get into Sassy's amazing story, I need to let you know that we have merch, right? I don't know what M word you thought I was gonna say, but the word was merch. And if you go to shop at thescore.com, you can check out our esports collection that has great t-shirts and hoodies. You can check out the link in the description. Back to the video. Sassy is one of the best, most decorated Valorant players to ever touch the game. But just a few years ago, he was competing in a completely different game. And uh, no, I'm not talking about CSGO. Sassy was the ADC for one of the best League of Legends teams in Brazil's CB LOL. He even helped them earn a summer title in 2017, shortly after joining the starting roster. Red Canids were always competing among the league's best, but every time they had a chance to qualify for a major international event, they fell short. And this continued for years. But in April 2020, the world was introduced to Valorant. Riot's new shooter quickly became a safe haven for former CSGO and Overwatch pros whose background in FPS gave them an obvious edge. But Sassy was interested too. Even though he'd spent years playing a completely different kind of game, he noticed some similarities to League of Legends. Honestly, for me, FPS was like my passion game, you know? And then when I heard that Valorant was coming out and that was from Riot, so it gave me like confidence to just go for it, you know? So I like it would have a strong infrastructure with Riot. Like, yeah, you know, like yeah, back end, right? Yeah, I, I knew that they would go full all, all in, you know, <laughs> on the competitive mm -hmm. scene. So I said, okay, Absolutely. this is an FPS game. And you know, there's agent, there's skills, so it's FPS with MOBA. So yeah, I think it's perfect for me. So Sassy put together a team and started competing in Brazil's growing Valorant community. Although he spent most of his pro career playing the world's most popular MOBA, Brazil had always been known for its TAC FPS esports, particularly CSGO. And so Sassy wanted to help his region succeed in Valorant as well. After some strong performances, he found himself back home on Red Canids as part of their inaugural Valorant roster. But Sassy's time with his former org didn't last very long. After the team failed to qualify for Riot's first official event, First Strike, Sassy left to join Team Viking's new roster. Vikings dominated the region in early 2021. They were clearly Brazil's best team, and that dominance set Sassy up for something great. Não vai pegar essa informação que a UFRC vai ser presenteado com a chance de brilhar! FRZ implacável para colocar! After years of struggling in league, Sassy finally had a spot at his first international LAN. Heading into Masters Reykjavik, Sassy and his squad amassed plenty of hype. Scrimbuck said that Vikings were one of the teams to watch out for, but as the event went on, they flopped. It was clear that the Brazilians were all talented aimers, especially Sassy, but some of their team comps and tactics were questionable. Well, Vikings have got to go back to the drawing board on that. We've seen the first Yoru come out here in Masters and maybe the last based on how it, uh, <laughs> how it played out. Vikings fell short in Iceland, but there were a couple takeaways. The first one was that Sassy was clearly pretty damn good. And second was that, according to the fans, part of his power came from his bald 
head. Unfortunately, the ball buff wasn't quite enough to get Vikings back to the game's second international land in Berlin. But throughout the year, they did accumulate enough points to earn their spot at champions. Sassy and his team were drawn into a group with the current Masters champions, Gambit. And although Vikings failed to topple the Giants and make it to the knockout stage, Sassy was still happy to attend the biggest event of the year. I, I came from League of Legends, so champions for me is like the worlds, you know? So yeah, I'm living the ring. It's my first worlds, let's say that. And it's my birthday, so... I'm not even sad that I uh, lost for Gambit, you know, I'm like, oh, I, we almost won against Gambit, and yeah, we have a chance, so, I mean, I'm living the dream, dude. Heading into the new season, Sassy had a difficult decision to make. Everyone knew he was talented, but he needed a team that would allow him to truly shine and to achieve what he knew he was capable of. So in early 2022, Sassy and Sadik left Vikings and formed a Brazilian super team with some of the best young talent in the region. And after dominating the challengers qualifiers, they were picked up by Loud. Sassy and Loud looked untouchable in Brazil. They went through the entire group stage and playoffs without dropping a series. In fact, in their entire run through challengers to qualify for Masters Reykjavik as first seed, they only dropped a single map. But Sassy had been here before. The last time he came to Iceland, despite a stellar domestic performance, things hadn't worked out. But this time, it was different. Sassy and his team were ready to prove all their doubters wrong. Maybe get a little bit lucky in a fight, but thus far, there hasn't been anything. In fact, that's a swing now from Sassy! Damn, that's a way to kick off a round of Prime Gaming Flawless. Another 3v2, drops down. Tagged up, the players are just trying to hunt out where they might actually be, Hoodie. See if he can get those shots off, but it doesn't look likely. Now a Bova only just reveals himself. Still, the defuse being stuck. The faith in his teammate comes off of it, still has to reload. 35 health. Oh, He's not oh, making it. Oh, what is that? You've got to be kidding me. Oh my goodness. Utility to cover as they push forward. All these angles opening up for Loud and the kills are going their way. It's left to finesse and he falls as well. Brazil have done it. They've made history as they go all the way to the grand finals. Loud were the real deal. They looked incredible throughout the playoffs and proved that they weren't just good domestically, they were one of the best teams in the world. Sassy, in particular, was fragging out unlike any other initiator at the event. But that wasn't the only thing people noticed. Throughout the tournament, Sassy acted as a leader and role model for his younger, less experienced teammates. And we know that we have two new players in the team. Então a gente tá tentando adquirir o máximo de experiência possível, o máximo de conhecimento. Quero que, principalmente os meninos, né? Eu quero que eles olhem para mim como uma referência. Now, Sassy had already earned the respect of his teammates, but as the tournament wore on, it became obvious that he inspired similar feelings in his opponents as well. Oh, I'm just saying that I'm really a big fan of you, dude. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I, I, I was like, I, I always watch your videos, yeah, dude, to get my aim better. Really, really. Yeah. So yeah, playing against you guys is f***ing good. Yeah, I've no, done great, so... You, you guys are f***ing crazy. Yeah, no. I mean, so yeah, I thank you guys. I hope you guys just go through hours and we we'll see you again. Yeah. Okay? I love, I love to play you guys again. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. You guys thank are really so good. Much, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm a f***ing... <laughs> At this point, Sassy was one win away from lifting his first ever international trophy. He and Loud had a chance to cement themselves as the best Valorant team in the entire world. But once their rematch against Optic got underway, everything fell apart. Maybe a tag with a great count for it. Yay, though! Whoa! Yay! Big a. players make big plays in big games, and he just did three kills back to back. And look at the buy they had coming into this. Huge impact alone. Zanak, you got nothing to do with it. Aspas now as well, left all to his own. A 1v5 off the back of Ye being such a nuisance, such a threat in all occasion. And now what do you do with this? You got to try and dismantle them. I don't know how you're going to make it around, but Aspas will give it a damn good try. Marv is closing in, and of course, look who's waiting in the back lines. The devil himself, yay, shuts down this half. Victor so low on HP, but he's still alive. He's still breathing, but he's going to lose his teammate. Marv goes down, another defuse. He's just going to try and sit this, but time has gone away, and Victor, it's one HP is all he needed. We're tied up. It's 12-12. It's OT.
found for Crashies. Quick turn, didn't note anyone towards double doors. Yay! Yeah, yeah, no way, Mars as well! And El Pancada! Tournament life in your hands, Optic on the verge, and it's all but over, it's all but done! Optic Gaming build their legacy brick by brick! The green wall of Optic make Reykjavik their own! The series was incredibly close. Two of the maps went to overtime, but it just wasn't Loud's day. So much so, this actually became the first time they had ever lost a series. Despite this, Sassy was proud of how far Brazil had come. After all, he went from bombing out at international events to representing his country in the grand finals in Reykjavik. We are the Brazilian team that got to the grand final Masters Reykjavik. <laughs> Sounds funny when I say this. <laughs> Won't lie, it's sad that we lost, but I will keep my heads up and come back stronger because we might get the second Masters title. But hey, Optic is a great team, you know. They're really good. They were the team that we used to watch, to learn, and we were playing against them on the grand final. So, yeah, it's just part of the process. When Sassy and Loud returned home, they dominated domestically once again, earning themselves a spot at Masters Copenhagen and without dropping a single map along the way. Everyone was ready to see them make a run to the finals, but Loud and Optic, the two Reykjavik finalists, were placed in the same group. And while the fans eagerly awaited their matchup on the winner's side of the bracket, both teams failed to win their opening match instead. So rather than playing for a spot in playoffs, this matchup was about elimination from groups. But the timing from Marv is surely divine. A gift from above, he waits for one, but he has to check the second. This could be a disaster. One HP, it's not enough. <laughs> Marv turns around and he gets the round. Optic keep it together, but boy, that was ridiculous. Back up as well, so he does go re-explore. He's gonna catch the other two in the slow field as well. No pressure felt on the back of this. A freebie onto Pancada. We'll actually re-swing it as well. Finds another, oh. closes things out. Oh. A confident Real swing nice. through from Ye. Oh, it's all gone absolutely awry. Ye now gets to roam free, punishes Sassy. This is not how it's meant to be. And Optic holding on to this Aspas, last one alive. Bows down to the old gods once again, denouncing the new era. And Optic stay alive. And Optic were, once again, Sassy's kryptonite. It seemed he just couldn't escape the North American Titans. Every time he came face to face with them, he lost but Sassy still had one last chance. Sassy and Loud enter champions with a lot to prove. After getting grouped in Copenhagen, expectations for the super team were at an all-time low. Not many people thought that they would go that far, especially after teams like FPX and Paper Rex proved that every region was a threat. Cause let's it's be just real. so regular. The top five, I might have some doubts about. Loud. It's loud at fifth. It didn't help that Sassy and his squad were once again placed in a group with Optic. And just like many people expected, Optic beat Loud and put them on the verge of elimination. It was do or die now for Sassy. If he and his team wanted to keep their chances alive, they'd need to outplay Japan's best, Zeta Division. And that pass from up top with the blades, 13 seconds left. Yep. It doesn't get much easier than that, dear friends. A 13 to 8 win to clean up map one for Loud. He's still in so much trouble. And they're just gonna double face him. Yeah, he gets one, but Les gets it at the end. The defuse comes through. A 2 0 win for Loud. Loud managed to overcome Zeta and secure their spot in the bracket stage. And once the playoffs got underway, they hit the ground running. Loud on the cusp now. Attempt is going to be made here as Melter is just trying to bait out the position, but even him, it feels like the confidence just was not there. 13 6, taking away the map pick. The Leviathan allowed these guys have come in with a goal. Determined to try and break that curse, determined to say, we are the best in South America. He was decayed so much, but his health is coming back. Makes it a little easier, but that lockdown isn't going to get the space they wanted out of it. RB with a drop, but only one, and it's falling apart. Loud are able to close it with three quick kills. And for the second time, they will be going to the upper finals versus a North American team. 
sassy and loud, strolled their way through the upper bracket. They looked like the team that everyone saw back in Reykjavik. But just like in Iceland, Sassy found himself facing off against Optic in the upper final. Optic had come out on top in all three of their recent meetings. But this time, things were different. We're about, about to dive into this map, and yes, Optic are the favorites here. They'll, they'll start on the attack, but Tom, it doesn't really seem like it matters whether which side they start yeah. on. They just dominate this map start to finish. Loud wiped the floor with Optic. Map 2 was a stomp and sent Sassy and his squad to their second grand finals of the year. But Optic weren't out for the count just yet. They pushed through the lower final to earn themselves a rematch. And Sassy knew this was the big one. He knew how it felt to be so close to winning a trophy and how devastating it was to fall short at the final hurdle. And so in the grand finals, he truly stepped up. Five more seconds. They're running all on block time with seven HP. He's charging down on the side. Oh, oh my God. God. It's not enough. Sassy, what, what is Sassy made of? Mob, how does on one? Quick handling of this Sassy fired up now. The leads to Sadax there, it's comfortable in the end, softened at the start. As Sassy now in the 1v2, Plant gonna come in, but they are closing the gap fast to save Plant, but then now there's players on lock. Did he note the one close through Garage? He absolutely has! And with 40 HP, he's done the unthinkable! He's taken them to 12! It's all on one, the last man standing, FNS, and after so much time, so many years of heartbreak, and the hands of Optic, Loud beat them in the best possible way, becoming the Valorant 2022 champion. Sassy's clutches broke Optic and allowed him to finally lift the first major trophy of his pro career. And it wasn't just any trophy, it was champions, the most prestigious event of the year in Valorant. Cara, acho que meu pai agora deve estar passando um filme na cabeça dele e acho que ele nunca imaginou que eu ia estar ganhando um mundial dessa vez. Sassy's journey in esports is unlike anyone else's. He went from competing in a MOBA to dominating in one of the most popular tax shooters in the entire world. Sassy has cemented himself as the best initiator in Valorant, and over the past year, everyone has fallen in love with him. He's humble, funny, and he's a player who others often look to for advice. And although he's no longer representing Loud, Sassy now has a new task. Yo, what up, Sun City? Today I'm here with Saucy and Pancada, and these are two pickups that I'm very excited about. Sentinels are the most popular Valorant team in the world, and they're coming off a disappointing year where they didn't qualify for a single international event. But with Sassy, one of the best players in the entire world on board, they're in good hands. I hope his name's actually Saucy and he just loves sauce. Like he's super into ranch. He's super into like other kinds of sauces. Why did I think of barbecue right away? Like those are the only two sauces, ranch and barbecue, why? That's not true. 